Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to do a polycrystal simulation. So to do that first, we have to go to the GitHub web page and targeting group. And under this crystal plasticity, there is this crystal plasticity store where I've downloaded this whole files. Okay. And um, so I'll extract Oh. Okay, so uh, now in this folder, there's a another folder called Dream 3D to Abacus. I will take that folder and copy it here to desktop. And uh, so in this folder, there are like uh, there must be three steps. Actually, the first step is the Abacus. So let's add that up. Abacus. So um, in the first step, we generate the microstructure in using Dream 3D. In the second step, either using MATLAB or Python, we create the input file for Abacus. And in the third step, we run the final element model. So I'll start with the step one. So in this, you see a Dream 3D uh, file. By the way, I'm not the best Dream 3D user. Um, and please. Um, Refer to Dream 3D website. Uh, it's um, called Blue Quartz um, or Dream 3D. Uh, here uh, you have really a nice help file that describes everything, and you can install the software, the latest version of the software, and everything. Um, so if you click on the larger file here, it will create a pipeline. Uh, this pipeline includes like the basic functions that you need to create a polycrystal. So the first thing is the stats generate. So this is called a pipeline. And the first thing is the stats generate, which is like which generates the statistics for that synthetic RVE. So uh, there are different statistics like grain size, uh, like morphology statistics, like ODF or texture and misorientation distribution functions. So you could do a lot of different kind of things, but the major one is um, is the grain size statistics. I'll just talk briefly about this. So there are two parameters to decide the grain size statistics. One is this mu, which is the natural logarithm of the average grain size, and it sigma is the standard natural standard deviation of the natural logarithm of average grain size. And uh, so this determines this distribution, uh, and this minimum max maximum cutoff actually determines where this distribution should cut off. So if we don't want like small grains, then we can put it uh, such that it will have a larger uh, distribution. And by the way, there are like this, these are called bins, and usually seven bins are required at, at least uh, to have a good distribution. And uh, in Dream 3D, all the dimensions are in micrometers, so those are all in microns. And uh, the other one is the next next one that is the important, uh, which decides on the size of your RVE. Dimension is the actually the divisions. RVE is the representative volume element, which is a fine element model. And uh, dimensions are means like the divisions. Divisions, how many divisions you have in along x, y, and z directions. And resolution means resolution. It's actually called also called the voxel size, which is like three dimensional pixel. So the actual size of our RV is this division times the, the actual size, which is one micrometer. So 10 times one is 10. So here it shows the box size. Um, so if I, have, if I change this resolution to two, you see the box size changed to 20. So this actually adjusts the size. And, um, but it, as you see, if I, if I increase it, you see the number of grains are also increased because our size is increased. So there are more grains in our RV now. So, okay, I will keep it as one and keep it very simple. One thing that I, we have to be really careful is the set. Um, okay, I will jump into the output. So these are the major inputs to the, to the, in the pipeline, but there are these outputs here. So there's some text outputs and file. So they should be written in the right place. So to be able to do that, we have to choose the correct folder location all the time, which is in my case, the desktop, the Dream 3D, and it has to override these files. 
this is a vox file but it shows up as txt which is incorrect so desktop dream 3d step and i should change it as a vox file okay and the other is again desktop Okay, and Jabocus file, desktop, stream 3D. Okay, and um, the other is the, the visualization file again. And um, I'm going to write this one as here. Okay, and I'm going to save this and so if you run it, uh, if it doesn't give any error messages, pipeline completed, then the success will create these files. So these are our files. Let's first try to visualize them. Uh, you can visualize by using Paraview. Um, uh, this um, XDMF file, this was the old one. So this XDMF file is the one that we created. So uh, let's go ahead and open that up. Uh, let's look at the features on visualized surfaces. Okay, this is a very coarse structure uh, for what we have, like few grains, and, and they're just there. Okay, so it works. Um, so the next step is to take these uh, uh, .imp files and the vox file and copy them into either MATLAB or Python, whichever one you prefer. They do both the same job. So we're going to put them in this folder. OK, so I'm going to use the MATLAB one. I'm going to turn, uh, click on MATLAB. So there's a function file here. Um, so as we mentioned in the former video, uh, there's a properties Excel file that we use this file to enter the values. So um, if we want to, if we don't want to use it, there's just one thing that we have to do. We have to choose this number as one. Uh, that means uh, we are not going to read the material information from this file, but it will be read from the user materials.f. This is just to give the user that option to enter the properties from here. Okay. Um, so if you uh, okay, if the 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 if you look at the, um, this function file, there are indeed three inputs. One is the file name. The other is the material ID. Uh, I want to use like FCC material two, as in the former video, and this is this indicates the number of outputs. So, uh, Dream 3D to Abacus. Of course, I have to pick the um, correct place. Uh, my file name is test case. My serial number is two, and I want twelve outputs. Okay. I will tell you what it means, what they mean in a moment. Now you see this IMP file is just nothing. It's just the one that it calls the other functions. So let's run this. Uh, okay. So it's run. It's quick. Uh, so you see now it's it's a file that contains all the abacus inputs. Now what I'm gonna what I needed is just this file. Okay, this IMP file. I'll take it. I'll go to the third step the abacus. Uh, I will start the abacus. Now what we need also need is the as the umat files and we have to put them into the same folder location. Okay so so uh, okay the first thing to do is to set the working directory to where we work which is the desktop. Uh, abacus step three okay now now we can import the model this imp file and see um here i'm going to delete, delete the other one just this one so if we look at the materials these are the grains okay great now if you look at these materials there are six grains and these are uh, the number of outputs that we set as 12 so this is the number that bar is set to 12 now and we got the the user material number two 
which is this number set to two. It's not a big deal when we have six grains, but if we have like 30 grains, which is usually the case, then it's very tedious to enter these inputs. So it's good to have that done automatically. That's why we have this inputs there. Uh, so these are the other angles, grain number one, phase number two. Let's say this is the other one, grain number three, phase number two, or material number two, sorry. And everything is set here. The only thing is, um, is the boundary condition. So let's try to set the boundary conditions up. Um, okay, let's apply an inaxial case. So what I'm going to do is just flip the backside, fix the the back surface normal to x along x direction. Create another one. Fix the back surface along y, normal to y, y direction, and normal to z, and z direction, and let's give a displacement input at the loading step. Now the size of the RV was like 1 times 10 is 10, so um, if I were to give 1% strain, 10 divided by 10, 1% strain will be 0.1. Okay. So to check the size of it, we can use this distance function. So you see the size distance is 10. It's in micrometers. Okay, great. Um, all right, so the next thing is to create a job. Job file. I'll set the scratch directory to the working directory because it creates a legend file. And the umat file has to be selected. Um, uh, I'll show you one, in, one input that I have added um, since the last time. It's in the user inputs. Um, so in in the former case we were using a, 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 a um, automatic file reader but it gave some problems for some of my colleagues so uh, here we set the number of elements manually uh, in 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 a case without the gnds we don't have to set the exact number but we have just some, something larger will be fine here it's default set to set to thousand which is um we got thousand elements here is 10 by 10 by 10 so it's like thousand elements so it is correct, and the element type has to be uh, correctly set. These are the really two inputs that have to be, that must be set correctly. And um, that's it. So let's run it. Um, oh, let's check the uh, let's check the the load case. Make sure so it's nonlinear geometry is on. Increments are small. Okay, fine. Let's run this. Submit it. Okay. So in this input file. Uh, while it's running, I'm going to show go through this one. These, this is the two inputs that I added re uh, recently. These are very important in GND. If you have GND models, these numbers have to be exactly the same number as in your mesh. Um, in GND models, adaptive meshing is not allowed, but in other cases, it's allowed. You have to just choose some number larger than um, what you need. So this actually allocates these arrays based on this number. Um, I, I told earlier that this, other than that, um, this is the model for GNDs. I added three GND models that are important. And um, this, there's this number that we have to watch for if we're using different phases. We have to watch for this number carefully. And uh, there were, there are three um, files that start with the word user so those those are like the user uh, where we can set some numbers user material contains the user material information in this case we are using user material 2 which takes the properties from case 2 which is here and um, these are all explained in the documentation phase 2 is, is in reserve number for fcc this is model uh, model three means it's a power law, and these are the power law constants, and so on and so forth. Um, 
and the user outputs are selected from this. Let me just show you that too once again. Uh, user outputs. So if you want to visualize some outputs, they are set here. There's only one output set, which is um, the total slip. But if you want more, it's possible to turn them on. It's just set like this because we don't have a large output file. Okay, it seems like running. Okay, it's doing some steps. So it's getting some, giving us some stress distributions. So we see we see also these um, state variable outputs, different slip rates in different places. So it works. Um, I think that's it. Um, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, make sure you can you can raise raise uh, the issue here, or you can contact me, or you can write from my YouTube channel. Thank you so much.